um, shortly before September 11th, we had also been told that Jesus's birthday was September 11th. And I know we're going back and forth with that now as far as conception date and all of that. But at the time, that was like the big news. And then it was uh, the disclosure of 9-11, which linked to JFK and the disclosure of that. So it was set up to be a monumental September 11th. And it was also one of those lessons where you learn to manage your expectations because I was very disappointed, more so than that Jesus's birthday wasn't recognized. You know, but hindsight's twenty twenty. There was so much that had to happen. You know, it just wasn't time. But you look at what all's happened in this past 12 months since then, and now everything that's fallen right here before the week of the 11th. So that gives me hope, you know, that that despair from last year is just, you know, that was my timing, my heart's desires, but it wasn't time. So it's a monumental day. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Um, it is. Today is uh, September 8th, 2022. And today in the morning time, um, in at least in the East Coast area the, in America, uh, we heard about um, the announcement of um, Queen Elizabeth's death. Anyway, so, okay, let's go into um, Enoch. Um, last time we met him was the second session of Enoch, and it was about um, the punishments for the angels who came down, those uh, 20 angels that um, came down, and, and they made a pact with each other, and then they took the women as their wives, and created and created giants and created a lot of um, incredible mayhem in the in the land in our land on earth and also um, what and God was very upset and and um, the you know the punishment that they were sentenced to and all these things and and there was uh, I think that this is remind me if I was I think this is where we we got and also there was one part of um, last time that kind of I understood from because before I was that why was it so strange to teach us all those knowledge from the angels, you know, the herbal. And then I realized because in one of the passage God said that said about the angels, you know, you haven't even learned the whole thing. I haven't even given you the whole thing, and then you pass it on, you know, whatever. He calls them mystic or myth. So um, these things to to the humans, you know, maybe to it's not right, you know. So whatever they were teaching us, or whatever we learned, is not correct. So it's not the whole thing what God had intended. So it's really that's why it's really skewered and it's really um, inverse and all that. So I I, I truly understood that pa that passage from last time, and um, okay. Um, Oh, gee, I hand it over to you. All right. Yeah, I'm tracking right with you, Yoko. The only things that I would add is that, um, yeah, he did go into um, the fact that, and God told Enoch this to tell the angels this when with the petition is that, you know, you thought that you knew all of the secrets of heaven, but I did not tell you everything. And so he did, God did confirm that he did not share all of the mysteries with the angels. So they didn't get away with as much knowledge as, you know, God had. And then they did use that in the wrong ways. And, you know, it's real 
simplistic to I mean it's easy when you think about the forging of the metals because they began making swords and you know things like that which obviously take human life but um and Cain was the first human um uh, well I I guess he was the first murderer too but um because Abel was the first human to actually experience death but that's a whole other story so the metals you can understand that the astrology and all of that but you know there's all of these different denominations that I've grown up with um, and I think often of some of my friends that were Pentecostal and they did not wear makeup and, you know, it's just one of those things that you knew about that denomination. And not being in that denomination, I didn't, you know, I didn't make fun of it, but I just didn't really give it a big thought about the particulars of it. But when they talk about making up the eyes and the eyelids, um, you know, now that makes me appreciate and understand why that denomination you know, avoided those things. So they saw the link in that, which, you know, I've worn makeup all my life and it doesn't make me a fornicator, but that's what I mean. They were teaching things in the wrong way and for the wrong reasons. And it always goes back to intent. So, um, yeah, I would say that about that. And then your uh, status of where we ended was um, right on the money. Uh, he talked about how they were leading men astray. And then Enoch had said that he saw the ends of everything. And then I wanted to uh, just clarify as we were ending there that he meant for the first generation, the generation of the flood. And that's where we should be picking up right now. Okay. So um, I will be playing is um, from chapter 20.1 to chapter 29.2, which is the end of chapter 29. And the timestamp on the video is 29 minutes and 17 seconds to 40 minutes. So it would be about uh, almost 11 minutes of uh, the passage that I'll be uh, playing, and then after that, we'll we'll talk about it. Sounds great. And these are the names of the holy angels who kept watch. Uriel, one of the holy angels, namely the holy angel of the spirits of men. Raguel one of the holy angels who takes vengeance on the world and on the lights. Michael, one of the holy angels, namely the one put in charge of the best part of humankind, in charge of the nation. Sarakel, one of the holy angels, who is in charge of the spirits of men who cause the spirits to sin. Gabriel, one of the holy angels, who is in charge of the serpents and the garden and the cherubim. And I went round to a place where nothing was made, and I saw a terrible thing, neither the high heaven nor the firm ground, but a desert place, prepared and terrible. And there I saw seven stars of heaven bound on it together, like great mountains, and burning like fire. Then I said, For what sin have they been bound, and why have they been thrown here? And Uriel, one of the holy angels, who was with me and led me, spoke to me and said, Enoch. About whom do you ask? About whom do you inquire, ask, and care? These are some of the stars which transgress the command of the Lord Most High, and they have been bound here until ten thousand ages are completed, the number of days of their sin. And from there I went to another place, more terrible than this. And I saw a terrible thing. There was a great fire there, which burnt and blazed, and the place had no cleft reach reaching into the abyss, full of great pillars of fire, which were made to fall. Neither its extent nor its size could I see, nor could I see its source. Then I said, How terrible this place is, and how painful to look at. 
Then Uriel, one of the holy angels, who was with me, answered me. He answered me and said to me, Enoch, why do you have such fear and terror because of this terrible place and before this pain? And he said to me, This place is the prison of the angels, and there they will be held forever. And from there I went to another place, and he showed me in the west a large and high mountain, and a hard rock, and four beautiful places, and inside it was deep, wide, and very smooth. How smooth is that which rolls, and deep and dark to look at. Then Raphael, one of the holy angels who was with me, answered me and said to me, These beautiful places are there so that the spirits, the souls of the dead, might be gathered into them. For them they were created, so that here they might gather the souls of the sons of men. And these places they made, where they will keep them until the day of judgment, and until their appointed time, and that appointed time will be long, until the great judgment comes upon them. And I saw the spirits of the sons of men who were dead, and their voices reached heaven and complained. Then I asked Raphael, the angel who was with me, and said to him, Who is this spirit, whose voice thus reaches heaven and complains? And he answered me, and said to me, saying, This spirit is the one that came out of Abel, whom Cain his brother killed. And he will complain about him until his offspring are destroyed from the face of the earth, and from amongst the offspring of men his offspring perish. Then I asked about him, and about judgment on all, and I said, Why is one separated from another? And he answered me and said to me, These three places were made in order that they might separate the spirits of the dead, and thus the souls of the righteous have been separated. This is the spring of water, and on it the light. Likewise, a place has been created for sinners when they die, and are buried in the earth, and judgment has not come upon them during their life. And here their souls will be separated for this great torment until the great day of judgment and punishment and torment for those who curse forever and of vengeance on their souls. And there he will be bind them forever. Verily he is from the beginning of the world. And thus a place has been separated for the souls of those who complain and give information about their destruction, about when they were killed in the days of the sinners. Thus a place has been created for the souls of men who are not righteous, but sinners, accomplished in wrongdoing, and with the wrongdoers will be their lot. But their souls will not be killed on the day of judgment, nor will they rise from here. Then I blessed the Lord of glory and said, Blessed be my Lord, the Lord of glory and righteousness, who rules everything forever. And from there I went to another place, towards the west, to the ends of the earth, and I saw a fire that burnt and ran without resting or ceasing from running, by day or by night, but continued in exactly the same way. And I asked, saying, What is this which has no rest? Then Raguel, one of the holy angels who was with me, answered me and said to me, The burning fire, whose course you saw towards the west, is the fire of all the lights of heaven. And from there I went to another place of the earth, and he showed me a mountain of fire that blazed day and night. And I went towards it and saw seven magnificent mountains, and all were different from one another, and precious and beautiful stones, and all were precious, and their appearance glorious, and their form was beautiful. Three towards the east, one fixed firmly on another, and three towards the south, one on another, and deep and rugged valleys, no one of which was near another. And there was a seventh mountain in the middle of these, and in their height they were all like the seat of a throne, and fragrant trees surrounded it. And there was among them a tree such as which I have never smelt, and none of them or any others were like it. It smells more fragrant than any fragrance, and it leaves and it flowers and its wood never wither. Its fruit is good, and its fruit is like bunches of dates on a palm. And then I said, Behold this beautiful tree, beautiful to look at, and pleasant are its leaves, and its fruit very delightful in appearance. And then Michael, one of the holy and honored angels who was with me, and was in charge of them, answered me and said to me, Enoch, why do you ask me about the fragrance of this tree? 
And why do you inquire to learn? Then I, Enoch, answered him, saying, I wish to learn about everything, but especially about this tree. And he answered me, saying, This high mountain which you saw, whose summit is like the throne of the Lord, is the throne where the Holy and Great One, the Lord of glory, the eternal King, will sit when he comes down to visit earth for good. And this beautiful and fragrant tree, and no creature of flesh has authority to touch it until the great judgment, when he will take vengeance on all and bring everything to a consummation forever, this will be given to the righteous and the humble. From its fruit, life will be given to the chosen. Towards the north it will be planted in a holy place by the house of the Lord, the eternal King. Then they will rejoice and joy and be glad in the holy place. They will each draw the fragrance of it into their bones, and they will live a long life on earth, as your fathers lived. And in their days sorrow and pain and toil and punishment will not touch them. Then I bless the Lord of glory, the eternal King, because he has prepared such things for righteous men, and has created such things, and said that they are to be given to them. And from there I went to the middle of the earth, and saw a blessed, well-watered place which had branches which remained alive, and sprouted from a tree which had been cut down. And there I saw a holy mountain, and under the mountain, to the east of it, there was water, and it flowed towards the south. And I saw towards the east another mountain, which was of the same height, and between them there was a deep and narrow valley, and in it a stream ran by the mountain. And to the west of this one was another mountain, which was lower than it was and not high, and under it there was a valley between them. And there were other deep and dry valleys at the end of the three mountains, and all the valleys were deep and narrow of hard rock, and trees were planted on them. And I was amazed at the rock, and I was amazed at the valley. I was very much amazed. Then I said, What is the purpose of this blessed land, which is completely full of trees, and of this accursed valley in the middle of them? Then Raphael, one of the holy angels who was with me, answered me, and said to me, The accursed valley is for those who are cursed forever, and will be gathered together all who speak with their mouths against the Lord, words that are not fitting, and say hard things about his glory. Here they will gather them together, and here will be their place of judgment. And in the last days there will be the spectacle of the righteous judgment upon them, in front of the righteous forever. For here the merciful will bless the Lord of glory, the eternal King. And in the days of the judgment on them they will bless him, on account of his mercy, according as he has assigned to them their lot. Then I myself blessed the Lord of glory, I addressed him, and I remembered his majesty, as was fitting. And from there I went towards the east, to the middle of the mountain of the wilderness, and I saw only desert. But it was full of trees from the seed, and water gushed out over it from above. The torrent, which flowed towards the northeast, seemed copious, and from all sides there went up spray and mist. And I went to another place away from the wilderness, I came near to the east of this mountain, and there I saw trees of judgment especially vessels of fragrance of incense and myrrh, and the trees were not alike. And above it, above Did you get kicked out, Yoko? No, I think that was it for, for until the, that was the, um, the segment for today. Did I make a mistake? Oh. No. Okay. Well, that was the 11 minutes, right? That went back quite a, quite quickly. Right. Correct. And I was very, I was, what caught my attention is the tree, the fruit. And that will be given to the righteous for life, for healing. And it's planted up north. That's very interesting. Also, it's the king who was down. And they said, Jesus. Mm. 
Right. And so this, these chapters were kind of a lot different than the ones before. Um, well, or at least in the beginning, because there was some dark and scary places that Enoch, you know, went to first. Um, and then he got to the place where um, the stars that had transgressed were being held until the day of the final consummation or judgment. And um, I think, you know, just through the span of that time, you know, at least, I forget the exact words, but you're looking at about at least 12,000 years, if not the full 26,000 that those stars had been there. So, um, but then he saw the seven mountains and that's um, um, going to go into Revelations much, much, much later, not in the book of Enoch, but in the real, the Revelations from the New Testament. But he talked about the seven mountains and they were made of precious stones and how beautiful and magnificent they were, and that there were three to the east, three to the south, and then the seventh was in the middle. But then he talked about four mountains, and so, you know, this is where that distinction is, is that I believe when he's talking about the four mountains, we're at the Polaris axis at that point. And those four mountains represent the four quadrants and then the four rivers that go out. And this is where I've mentioned there that it's kind of like the human heart. It has, you know, with four chambers, four arteries. And, you know, so same thing, the four quadrants with the four rivers that go out. And in the center of that is where the tree of life was and that that is the tree that cannot be touched um, until the final judgment when that tree is given to us. So now if that's a real tree or if it's more of that figurative, but I will say that we'll get into um, before the flood, God does tell the archangels to cut down that tree. And we'll see that the top of the tree stays and it's alive, but the bottom of the tree is gone. And then that's where that magnetic whirlpool is now. So we're, and then he does, you know, I always try to keep the generation separate. Is he talking about Noah's generation or is he talking about the distant generation to come, which is us? And when he talks about the inheritance of that tree, he is talking about the time that God is actually going to come down because upon that, the mountain this is going to be his throne. So that tells us that that's not Noah's generation, that that's the final generation. And then he also tells us that he's going to be on that throne forever which is the distant generation. So that's where it's, it is kind of good to stop and go back and forth because this is what I prefaced at the beginning is one of the main um, challenges is to keep the different generations separate to know exactly what parable is referring to which time frame. But um, so yeah, um, that went by fast, but those were very important chapters to kind of break down and to catch. It's a little subtle. Uh, so, yeah, a nice place to stop. What What's the feedback, Aria and, and everyone else? Well, I just have to say that I enjoy so much listening to you. Um, speak you've i know you've listened to the book of enoch i don't know how many times you told us one time but you may have forgotten how many at this point but you have a good grasp on it and you bring it to life because it almost sounds like a fairy tale unless you bring some meaning to it and and you certainly do that and i'm so appreciative of 
how you do present it. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, you've heard me say it a million times that, that the book of Enoch is the map to everything. It's the past, the present, and the future. It's the map. But, you know, you have to learn how to read a map. Um, and so that's just kind of what I've been trying to do is to, to and that's where why I do talk about the different generations so that we don't get lost um, because it's definitely a map. It's a key that uh, was a gift. Um, you know, God picked Enoch to be the scribe um, and gave him this. Um, and we'll go into all of that, but um, there's an angel that you'll learn about. I think his name, it's Prevail or Progable. But, you know, each uh, angel that God created and creates, I guess he still creates them, um, they have a, uh, a talent, a gift. And so the one that I'm talking about, Prevail, Proguvel, his is kind of like Enoch is a scribe, but it's like, a gazillion times on steroids. I mean, he is the one that actually records into the book, not the book of life, so to speak, as we know the book of life, but we know that there's different principalities and, and, and entities that God put in judge over the nations and then also he calls on the shepherds and so everyone is going to be judged as to how they shepherded their herd did they do it godly or did they not those types of actions is what is scribed by uh progival um so it's like that's really interesting uh, I don't know exactly what chapter that's going to come. I would say probably either in the 40s or the 60s. But so Enoch is like a mini hymn. Um, and, it, and it's a map. It really is. So I appreciate that compliment, Aria. Well, LG, I noticed that all the angels, the, 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 the base of their name, the last part, seems to be veil or vel. Is there some sort of etymology that that you have, I mean, I just thought of it now, or I would do it myself, but is there some sort of meaning to why all those names seem to end with that? There is, but I don't remember exactly what it is. And I'm not saying that it's directly related to the word, the, the, the Elohim, the Elohim. But it's kind of along those same lines. So the way that they all end is like smart coding. You know what I mean? It's like if they all end this way, then that equals this, which is an archangel. Or if they all end with, with him, then they're part of the, Elo, the Elohim. El, Elohim. You, you might could help me with that, especially you, Hope, but you know what I'm saying. E-L-O-H-I-M, which is the, um, I don't even call them little G gods, but when I talk about the principalities, and, and they're not all bad. I'm not talking about dark principalities, um, but, you know, they help, they all had a function, and they were, they help God, you know, keep judgment of the land because this is old testament this is before jesus came in the new covenant and the new promise this was the old way but anyway all of theirs end like with h-i-m and so the angels are probably the same way but i don't know exactly what their word is that it would all go back to okay um uh, the I'm looking up 
actually what you were asking. So it in in Reddit, somebody was talking about why is it I E L and all that E L. And the one of the person answered was this a conversation of two years ago. E L means of God. So um that's what in in Hebrew and most angels name ends in E I L or A E L. Um it's all Old Testament thing. Anyway, so this is what I found so far and to answer Aria. Well, thanks, Yoko. That's that makes sense. And I've always heard that that word L G um pronounced Elohim uh, just by people who were teaching on it. But you know, I could be wrong, but that's how I've always pronounced it as well. Thank you, Hope. Yes, you know the Ellie Mae version. I can't even use talk to text. So <laughs> I struggle, but I swallow my pride and, and give it my best shot. But yes, it you it just rolls so beautiful off your lips. <laughs> But that makes sense, too. Thank you for that, Yoko. I mean, it kind of, it closes the gap there. So it, it kind of is a, a category. It's of him. Yeah. And I have another question about the, what we just heard. LG, the, so this would be the timeline, the distant generation, us, and then also is that so in 30 AD, after Christ died, he went down into the Hades and to rescue all these uh, souls, right? So in this passage, we just heard all these souls that were in kept in this area until Judgment Day. Um, the good ones, and they were separated into what three different or two different. The good ones and the evil ones and all that they were separated and then the they whatever they they will be heard and they will be heard during the on the judgment day so so, so i have a question is that um so it does it still is it still like this or 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 have we been um released by y yeshua Well, we've had a bridge built. So first of all, um, before God ever created Adam, he and Jesus knew that a bridge would and a redemptive plan would be needed. So the plan was developed before Adam was created. So, but before Jesus came, when all under the Old Testament, no one had a, and because this was a redemptive plan that was required for the eternal kingdom, which was to come, you know, seven, eight, nine thousand years later. Um, they already knew there was going to be a period of time that would be without Jesus under the Old Testament. And so those people never, even the bad ones, they never got to choose to follow Jesus because he had not come yet. So it's much easier to not talk about the bad ones because I'm not sure. But all of the people who died under the Old Testament before Jesus came were like Abel, Moses. Noah, you know, all of our biblical lineage, Seth, all, all of them. So when Jesus died, he went to Hades and he got those souls and escorted them to heaven. Now, the bad souls could have been in a different holding place. I don't know. But all I know is when G the story that we have anyway, when Jesus was on the cross, remember there was the uh, 
the two men on either side. The one man got saved and Jesus saved him right there on the cross. The other one, I think his name was the one that started with the B, Bracus, Brucus, something like that. He made fun of the other guy for letting Jesus save him on the cross and would have nothing to do with it. Well, Jesus died before Bracus died. So Jesus had already gone to Hades and gotten all of the souls. When Bracus died, the last words that he said audibly on the cross, his dying words were, where is everyone? Which infers that hell was empty when he got there. Now, was there another holding place? Well, it looks like he would have went to that bad holding place and it was empty, but it was there another one? Maybe. But what he saw, it was empty. Well, that's fascinating. So everyone born since that time has had a choice to follow Jesus because Jesus's birth had already occurred. So he's the bridge now. But there's that grace of those who still have to learn about Jesus. You know what I mean? And and so there's there's still that seat at the table. And that's why atheists and different people or people that have never followed Jesus, um, these after-death experiences where they do come back. Um, and, you know, I don't go on the fringe much, but they call out to Jesus and they don't even know why. Some of them don't even know the word Jesus, but they call out to him anyway. So there is that light within us that knows to call out even when our brain doesn't know to call out. That's my opinion. Well, I like that opinion. And there was something about faith also in the Old Testament um, because I know that Timothy wrote about it, and I think in Ephesians, Paul wrote to the to the Ephesians that um, <clears throat> I think it was Abraham, it could have been Noah, obeyed God, and he counted it to him as righteousness. And so I think that from the couple situations that we that point back to the Old Testament from the New Testament writers, there was a chance for people who lived with, before Christ to believe God, the God who they knew, even before they had the you know, Ten Commandments or before any of, of the law was written, they had an opportunity to trust God and to believe what he said to them in their in their spirit and and he counted it to them as righteousness and that was those were the people that he he you know brought with him that jesus brought with him to to heaven i'm not sure if that's how you interpreted it lg but that was my understanding about the the opportunity that all people had to to walk with god because enix walked with god and god took him just up into heaven without having to go through death. But um, that's kind of just my thoughts about that. Excellent point. Excellent point. And, you know, um, not to get in a debate about what parts of the Bible, you know, may or may not have been, uh, I won't say manipulated. That's such a strong word as far as the translations, maybe the translations and the words they used have, uh, you know, 
slanted it a different way. But, um, you know, it would have us thinking that in the Old Testament, like you say, that that walk with God involved animal sacrifice, right? But where I am today is that I wonder, you know, because Satan was already here and how much, you know, deception there was. And then even because I just don't know that even before Jesus came, that a walk with God would have involved sacrifice even for animals. But yet I know that it's there. So I think you're exactly right. And I think that that relationship was even more beautiful and more godly than what has been evidenced and brought forth for us. I'm not saying that thanks wasn't given for wonderful crops and, you know, people weren't paying it forward. But that whole, you know, the the sacrifice and even the part where Abraham and, you know, he had the dagger up above and it was just moments away. I question the authenticity of that now that I've learned all about, you know, their their little G P O S is the one that required sacrifice all along. So back to circle back to you hope yeah i think that you're exactly right and that it was they were much much closer and in tune their dna was in tune with god and it was second nature to walk with god back then yes i agree and they didn't have i mean they had the opportunity just in being in nature and they didn't have all the, you know, pulls that we have here with all the technology, and maybe they did, but they did. They seemed to. Um, it seemed like they, they just had a more pure ability to hear um, and discern good from evil, and those who chose to walk with God and uh, avoid evil were the ones that God kept for Himself and took eventually to heaven. So I think, you know, even before having the opportunity to receive Christ, people had an opportunity to know God and walk with him because of their own God seed and and the God consciousness that they had and the ability, the fact that they were made in the image, man was made in the image of God. So they had the ability to hear him and walk with him and, and, um, and know him which was beautiful, I think. Yes, they actually were made with his breath of life, which is why Satan (laughs) had a total come apart, you know, and that that same breath of life could then create the, the continuity of life. But yeah, so we've all, that breath of life is us being created from our father's breath and the mother earth's dust. It was a consummation. It was a creation of us. Also, it was one other. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Finish. Finish up. No, I'll continue. Um. Well, you know, it's just that quick that I forget. Oh, I know what it was. The particular chapters that we um, listen to tonight um, are some of my favorite with Enoch. I did a lot, and maybe when we finish this series, I'll read my gematria from the book of Enoch that I did while I was uh, listening to it over the years. But anyway, 
Enoch, I just fell in love with him. He is a beautiful man. His mannerisms, his words, of course he would be because, I mean, he was so godly that he didn't die a physical death, right? But these particular chapters is where he says, I wish to learn about everything. And what is this fragrance? And the angel's like, Enoch, what? 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 Why are you so interested in this fragrance? It, it's the most beautiful fragrance I've ever smelled. You know, and you see a glimpse of how sweet Enoch was. You know, and that, it, and these are the little things that you'll see as we go through. And he's just the epi epiphany of a beautiful, godly man. You know just sweet in nature back to your point hope probably the way that that they used to be that reverence that reverence for god and the reverence for everything he created and just mystified and just to the point of passing out over just a smell or the beauty of something you know, I hope we feel those kind of things when we step across into our new world. Awesome. Yeah, um, I'll come back to it. Anyone lost my thought? Sorry. <laughs> I know, right, that we may need to change the name. Like, if somebody needs to say something, let them, because we've only got three seconds till we forget it. We're old. We're tired. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, um, during those times, you know, how we, right now, everybody's like, oh, the, the, the veil is lifting, the veil is lifting. So during that, those times, and according to uh, what we read or it's in the book of you know, so the veil is not there so everything was real i mean they were like giants right going around and they were as god knows what else they were you know right so it was really real things were real so it was just you know yeah in front of them and all that so it's like right now, right now, we're just we're like oh, every day we wake up, we're being lied to about this and that, you know, so we're, everything's so unreal because it was so the veil, you know, we had, we, we've been born into, you know, all these layers of veils. So that's why in some ways it's, you know, I think if everything is real and, you know, then there in some ways, because we still have a lot of God in us, so so we could still be, you know, awesome and, and beautiful if everything around. But if everything around us is not real, even though we don't know exactly it's a light, but we can feel it. So therefore, we have grown into this, like, you know, that kind of energy. That's what I'm trying to trying to say. But anyway, so but Enoch is I I. No, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, back to the veil, and maybe this will be a good place to close for the lesson for tonight. But, you know, everything kind of has a double meaning. We talk about the veil, you know, and it's the veil of deception and all of these layers. And then other people talk about the veil and they talk about being able to see into more dimensions. Um, but, you know, if you go back to the very, very beginning, when God created Adam and Eve before what we call the fall, but it was really just, you know, Satan messing up the whole entire world, they, um, they could see into heaven. 
Now, I'm not saying there wasn't a firmament there. There was a firmament there because it was created uh, in the six days of creation. But there was an opening because they could see into the heaven. They could hear the angels, see the angels. And do you remember how they would walk in the garden? And in the cool afternoon, they would feel God's breath and he would talk to them. Well, you know, a lot of times over the years, I've taken that to mean the wind would blow, you know. No, they felt his real breath from the opening the same way they could hear the angels. And after the fall, that got closed. Well, when God brings heaven on earth, that veil or that opening, you know, will probably be available to us again once we're restored and worthy of it. And then there you go, Jesus, who was there from the very beginning with the redemptive plan to be able to give us a bridge of salvation, to be able to feel the breath of God. Good place to end, maybe. Any wrap-up questions? I just so appreciate this group. It, it's not too long, and it's not too short, and we're covering a a very important subject, one that was really kind of hidden from us in a way. Uh, and uh, I'm grateful that Yoko has brought it to the forefront. And I'm grateful for all the years and time you spent, um, LG, perfecting your understanding of it. So I'll be here next week. Well, well thank, thank you, you and too. Yoko. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I just wanted to thank you too, LG, just for your your um, masterful way that you teach and the way that you entertain the questions and the sense of wonder that you always portray when you're teaching. I love that. And Yoko, thank you for putting it together and taking your time to arrange this. Yeah, thank you. Um, I just want to say, not. This has sparked, this um, book club, um, Enoch, has sparked. When did it spark in my mind? It sparked when I listened to LG's decode on Enoch back in the tree. I don't know if you all remember, but I do remember. And I listened to it very intently, intense. It was intense. It was great. And I said, wow. I would like to know more from him about the Book of Enoch. I just want to say, and then when I started this channel, you know, I think the first time we met and we, we were talking about, and this somebody said, maybe we should do the Enoch or, or some, I don't know. And I said, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it did, that spark, it, that's when it started. And then we will continue and we'll do, um, probably it'll be 11 times. This is the third time. And the next time will be um, September um, 15th, next Thursday at seven um, Eastern time. And I will put, put up the post on um, the area that we'll go through, the 10 chapters we'll go through. And um, it's, a, it's a very, you know, <laughs> I call it the adventure of Enoch I and mean, it's exciting I mean it's adventure it's incredible it's like he goes to here and he sees the, you know the fruit and all uh, and all these it's explained to him and he meets up with these angels angels with names and their duty everything but it's just like so if anything just read it and you'd be like wow oh I am but anyway so thank you for coming and I am going to stop the recording now and if um, some of you are welcome to uh, stay for um, after talks, if you would like. Thank you. One moment. One moment before you stop, Yoko. Okay. Um, I did want to thank everyone uh, that is here tonight. It's informal. And so um, those that like to speak do. And, and um, 
everyone's welcome as a listener. And on that point, I want to say that this recording, um, a lot of people can't join live. And I like to thank in advance those that do listen to it on replay. And, you know, at this point, I've put it all on the table. And if you want to share um, the lessons as we go along with friends or family that, you know, can't join in or just aren't interested in actually being on Telegram, I do give my permission uh, for that. So um, I'm not encouraging you to do that one way or the other, but that's an invitation. And if you feel like the message would help someone, then you certainly have my permission. So thank you, Yoko. So with that, yes, uh, let's land the plane. Yes, and thank you. Thank you, LG, definitely. And one more thing is that in the, and I will be posting screenshots of the chapters, meaning that the literature will be in a group, and I will do that for the next time. So some of you, you know, you would like to read, you can read through it. And then, um, you know, some of you like to listen and you can have the audio because the video will be on also on post posted. OK, I thank you so much. I'm going to stop the recording now, but I'll still stick around for a few minutes.